Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731 1230. That's 731 1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1 866 820 that's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hi, welcome everybody. This is the Nevada Cannabis News. I'm Jennifer Solis, and to my right is Kurt Dukach, Perry Haichu. On our board is Lawrence. He always makes me sound good. And Beach is our producer. Today in... The Today in the studio, we have a special guest. Her name is Lori Glauser. She is with Women Grow. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you. Well, um, let's start off by talking about Women Grow. What is Women Grow and how did you become involved with it? Sure, sure. Women Grow is a professional networking organization that was created to really connect, educate, inspire, and empower the next generation of cannabis industry leaders, specifically the female leaders among us. We support women leaders in all segments of the industry, and we encourage women to found companies, to start new companies, and to take leadership roles throughout the industry. So it was um, created from a loose association of women that were affiliated with the National Cannabis Industry Association, and a group of women got together in Denver just over this past summer to form Women Grow. They um, the NCIA was actually a, a founding benefactor for them, and so they went ahead and started the Denver chapter. Since then, they've started 20 chapters across the country. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, including Alaska and Guam now even. Fantastic. Right on. Yes. And that's all been within the last year, hasn't it? It has, all since August. That, that is amazing how Women Grow have gr- has grown. It's exactly. impressive. <laughs> yes, that's it really is. impressive. Um, so... What are you? What are your plans to accomplish uh, with Women Grow here in Southern Nevada? Sure. Well, we just started with our first chapter meeting last month. We do have monthly chapter meetings. They're going to be held on the first Thursdays of each month. Our second meeting is this week. Our plans to um, what we plan to accomplish is to grow the chapter with the professional women and men. Men are also invited. Okay. To come together to pr- to provide networking support to talk about issues of the day and, and generally collaborate. I found that in the first meeting that we had last month, the key theme was really collaboration. We brought together executives from all types of, um, from cultivators to lawyers to consultants, um, and we all came together and, and it was a really great meeting and I anticipate that we'll have more people at the next meeting and it'll just continue to grow from there. Sure, so the next meeting is this Thursday and where is that located at? Sure, it's gonna be Thursday at six o'clock at Sierra Gold on Jones and 215. Okay, all right. And it's what, it's $25? It is, it's $25 in advance. You Mm -hmm. can go to the Women Grow website and look at events to see where you can sign up to to get your tickets. It's also $30 at the door. And what is that website? The website is womengrow.com. Womengrow.com. Yes. So you can uh, obtain information about the meeting and RSVP at womengrow.com for this Thursday at 6 p.m. Yes. I also have a local Facebook page that you can sign up for as well. So once you sign up through the Women Grow website, I'll get your contact information from there and add you to the Facebook group. Very cool. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah, I joined that group this morning. Great. <laughs> so, so women grow uh, is for women and men, so you don't discriminate, uh, you know. But your first chapter meeting, I think I saw a picture and I saw some uh, industry leaders there. Like Kathy Gillespie was there, uh, and um, you know yourself, mm-hmm. of course. And who are some of the other people, if you don't mind, or sure. they don't mind? Yeah. Last last week, last month, we had Serena Choi from National oh, Licensing. Yes. I know Serena. Yeah, yeah. So she actually spoke to us about the licensing process. And each month we do have a, a different speaker. Um, and uh, this month we're going to have Natalie from ABS uh, Builders. Oh, I know and, Natalie too. Yes. <laughs> and um, let's see, who else? So Kathy Gillespie was there. Um, 
uh, we have uh, a lot of the cultivation facilities are represented, like um, Jennifer Goldst Goldstein from Nuveda. Oh, right uh, on. For example, we have um, uh, representation from Libra Wellness. We have representation from, well, several of the cultivation facilities. That's great. That's great. And um, so are you planning on um, putting like lobbyist groups together? Or are you just kind of networking, collaborating, mm -hmm. that type of stuff? Well, given it was our first chapter meeting and we're just getting familiar with one another, certainly we have an intention of getting together and and going in that direction of advocacy as it makes sense for our group to do so. I know the National Women Grow um, chapter, they they went out to lobby days in Washington and mm -hmm. they continue to be um, uh, involved mm -hmm. at that level. And, and we will get involved as well. And I know several of us are also involved and the other associations and groups here in in Nevada as well. Sure, networking and uh, networking and um, you know making friends and collaborating is really important in this budding industry for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, I applaud you guys for starting your group. Well, Absolutely, thank and yeah, thank you so much for deciding to come to Nevada and helping us build community here. You know, you're definitely kind of definitely filling a niche. We think, and uh, we're just hoping that we can all work together toward common goals and. Uh, help build this great state you know? okay so women grow isn't your only interest I, I i assume that you also have an interest in the cannabis community other than women grow and could you tell me about it yes so i have a background in management consulting and primarily in the energy space and the electric power space so i came to nevada about four years ago to work on the Envy Energy Smart Thermostat program with IBM. Oh, right. um, as I saw the cannabis industry develop, one of my interests and passions in the space is related to energy consumption and cultivation facilities. And so that was one aspect that got me interested in what is going on. Also with my prior life of a consultant, I worked on issues re regarding energy theft because of um, the high energy costs in, in the people stealing energy and, oh wow uh, like so like last week we were yeah. talking about that the illegal mm -hmm. uh cultivation that was tapping into nevada uh power and and one of their mm -hmm. one of their triggers was that their power bill was only 40 bucks <laughs> so, 70 dollars on a five bedroom house well, yeah as a exactly former consultant how common how common is that really would you say does it does a lot of that kind of go unreported or is that kind of an isolated incident that we that we saw on television well there it's actually a significant problem in some areas the 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 study that i worked on was in British Columbia and BC Hydro, which is the provincial electric uh, utility up there, was experiencing billions of dollars in lost energy due to diversion of energy from um, away from the uh, well. I should say, oh, close to a billion dollars. I should say. Wow. Uh, diverted away from the from the electric utility. That's unbelievable. How do you survive after something like that? How does a company continue to keep its books afloat after getting such a massive loss? Well, this is the pr this is a very large company. So I mean, we're talking a, a percentage, a, a small percentage of the total okay. energy. So um, as it's a huge dollar number, um, it's relatively right. small compared to their total energy consumption in the in the entire province yeah Perry I was reading a fortune fortune magazine and that that's the industry that actually makes the most money mm -hmm. per employee is the energy uh, the energy industry hmm. interesting you know? and and I was reading that and I was like dang I'm in the wrong <laughs> business yeah, man. Then, then why do they keep raising my rates <laughs> <laughs> well didn't uh, Warren Buffett just brought uh, Nevada energy didn't he yes he did yeah yes, it went down it went down about you know the average bill they said dropped about 17 cents when he got a hold of it but I think they're going for another rate hike now so okay. we'll see okay so are you um, are you consulting from some for some of these cannabis groups about uh, energy Yes, I am. Well, I'm prov providing sustainability advisory services to a couple of the cultivation facilities, but we're still in very early stage of, of that work. But really what I have done since coming here is um, created my own firm that provides information, research, and analysis about the space um, that came to be because I was assisting with the development of the applications last year. So last year I was actually approached by Leslie Boxcor of Electrum Partners and he asked me to assist him with the development of some of the applications. So that's how I was introduced to the industry and since then um, I've just continued to develop my network and, and my understanding of the technical side of the industry. Sure, sure. Right on. Yeah, Leslie's a good guy. He's, uh, he's the guy who helps us with the uh, Halloween parade. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's Corey, his wife. Yes, yeah. that's Corey. No doubt. <laughs> 
All right, you guys. Um, I'd like to switch. Uh, I'd like to switch uh, topics a little bit and uh, talk about IP1. If you guys aren't aren't familiar with IP1, um, it's something that basically is going to make the alcohol uh, industry some money, and it's going to divert a lot of funds away from. Uh, the cultivators and producers, and and it's basically going to come back down on the on the cost for the patients. That's what we think, and uh, we've been told, and we've been told by the powers that be, supposedly, that this won't affect patients. But we can't be sure. Well, anything we really that can. raises any cost in the beginning is going to come down on on, it's, on it's the cost true. of the Unfortun medication. Unfortunately, true, and uh, it, it's just really saddens me to see the alcohol industry so easily able to walk in and attempt to seize control of what we've worked so hard to develop over the past 15 years of fighting for this medical marijuana war here since the initial uh, constitutional amendment was passed and uh, just when we seem to get our feet under us you know they want to chop our legs out and um, it just seems like I don't remember I don't remember the alcohol lobby in session lobbying to uh, pass the bill. I don't remember their people up there helping during the uh, legislative hearings and things of that nature. I don't remember them just putting the work in, but they're more than happy to write our coattails now and attempt to seize control. How I read it was uh, the local liquor distributors will now have control of all distribution of recreational marijuana sales. Uh, <laughs> which will apply an additional 15% tax yes. on top of all pre-existing taxes to that. But I don't believe the distribution facilities will have a tax attached to their portion of it. Yeah. Uh, and so basically the cultivators are going to have to pay a tax to uh, to be in the industry. An additional tax. They're an already additional being tax. taxed. We're being taxed a lot. Yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. said today, so I got to pay an extra 15% to deliver my product that I could deliver for free. Well, here, you know, our producer wrote us a little note. It says, together we can speak out. And that's very true. And I'd actually like to take a second to talk about community and together we can speak out. Um, I had a small personal beef recently with a uh, fellow advocate named Cindy Brown over some nonsense. She was cracking a joke at me and I really took it overly personally and I just wanted to take this time to apologize to her on the air, but this isn't about that personal beef. This is about trying to bring the tribes together on a common issue. Here, here. And I really want to see uh, these petty differences put aside and these little things kind of set set aside so that we can really focus on what's right for Nevada and what's right for all of us. And I just really want to hope that this gesture publicly will hope to uh, soften some hardened hearts and hopefully we can really just call a meeting and, and really kind of work this all out because if we don't stand together on this, they're just going to walk right all over us because unfortunately I believe that some of the people who helped get this industry on the ground are now being swept aside. Well, working for the people who uh, wrote this bill, you know, I feel that some of our own have kind of uh, turned to the dark side, turned to the dark side, I guess. Yeah, unfortunately. And I understand that it's just capitalism and business is business. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But regardless, it hurts a little bit. So we're so. calling out right now in public that we want a meeting of all of the tribes together to really just talk about this issue and talk about other issues that are affecting the patients. All personal beefs aside. Yeah, this is, all, this is serious. All, all, all hurt feelings aside, everything pushed aside for the good of the patients and the will of the people. This is not about, IP1 is not about the will of the people. IP1 is about big business now stepping in and trying to take over about, what we have pushed for this state yeah. of Nevada. We have grown our own medication for 13 years and, and we, we were, were forced to and we were forced to and we were fine with the dispensaries we were fine with the cultivators and with the producers but when it's somebody else stepping in now big alcohol stepping in you know that's almost a slap in the face well, last we, year last time it was big pharma and yep. then they were like okay well we still got the bill passed and but now you can't have your right to grow and now you're telling us that the alcohol industry is going to take control of our cannabis industry before we even have a chance to prove ourselves that doesn't seem <laughs> if i would have known that this was the eventual course that it was taken that this would have taken when i originally went to go lobby for sb 374 i wouldn't have lobbied for it yeah I, no, I, no, no doubt about it i would have just hit the brakes on it because this is this is getting 
this is getting ridiculous. And now there are rumors up there saying that we can, and me in particular, are behind IP1, and or, we're, no, in we're in favor of it. Of it. And, yeah, in we're favor here to tell you that we are definitely in not not in favor of IP1 in no way, and I don't believe that, uh, according, you guys were at the Medical Marijuana Association luncheon today where oh. it was discussed, and why don't you tell me how the public reaction was when it was discussed? It was not just the public. I thought there was going to be a lynching. I did too. <laughs> not only not only that, it wasn't just patients that were against this. It was cultivation, production, testing. D- d- testing, dispensaries, everybody. If you know what, Neil Levine, I, I have to give him props for walking in there and 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 talking about this because that was like walking into the lion's den on this one well, because you, everybody looked at like they were they wanted to lynch this oh guy. no doubt but do he's you, he's brave and he can take it you know he 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 does this for a living and uh you you know you throw the mud he'll he'll take it yeah well they also they also scheduled the security company on the same bill so you know <laughs> <laughs> they had armed guards in uniform there <laughs> <laughs> in case he, in case he needed some backup, huh? Yeah, well, it, it, almost lo- or not. it almost looked like he was going to need backup because he got up there and first of all said that I was, uh, you know, oh, no, you don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay, all right. Well, tell me what I know what you're talking Well, you know, tell me what you know. And, and there are lobbyists up there right now on behalf of cultivators, producers, dispensaries that are trying to get this quashed. And true, we can't quash it, but you know what we can do? Hold a hearing. Hold a hearing. And not only hold a hearing, but you can also make a competing bill that has all this BS out of it about the, about the distributors. We can work on that for sure. But at this very moment, what we need you to do if you're listening is we need you to call your local assemblyman, assemblywoman, or state senator and tell them to hold a hearing on this. This cannot go to ballot without a hearing. If there's a hearing on it, you better believe we'll pack the room and we'll have some delegates there to represent our our cause. We'll you know get the tribes together and select a couple of people to speak, but we want those rooms packed and those hearings to show these people that we do care and we are still here. You know, we have not gone away. The patient community is still a force and we want to be heard. We don't want our opinion to be swept under the rug like it has been so many times before. All right, you guys, we're going to go on a break and come back with our 420 moment. Um, Lori is going to join us after the break also, and we'll talk more about uh, these pressing issues. Join us in a moment. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or... Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join WeCan and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at wecan702.org. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs. 
bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com <coughs> 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 <laughs> Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. And today, in honor of Lawrence on the boards, we're going to cover Doug Benson. Doug Douglas Stephen Doug Benson, born July 2nd, 1964, is an American stand-up comedian and actor who has, a, uh, has appeared on Comedy Central Presents Best Week Ever and was a contestant on Last Comic Standing in the show's fifth season. In 2007, he starred in the film Super High Me, a documentary about marijuana usage. Benson also currently hosts the popular Doug Loves Movies podcast, along with his weekly marijuana video podcast show, Getting Doug With High. His Comedy Central series, The Benson Interruption, uh, ended its first season December 2010 and was turned into a monthly podcast. All right. Uh, Doug Benson started his weekly talk show uh, podcast entitled Getting Doug with High. It generally air airs every Wednesday at 4.15 so that he can have a 4.20 moment also. And he invites his <laughs> featured guest to recreationally smoke marijuana with him at 4.20. Then he asks them questions and discusses topics usually related to marijuana. And at the end of the segment, he makes them watch a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, notable guests on the show include Cheech Marin, Tommy Chong, Kevin Smith, Jay, uh, Jay. Anyway, uh, Jack Black, <laughs> Andy Riker, Dan Harmon, uh, Michael Ian Black, Sarah Silverman, Pete Holmes, etc. Et Super High Me was in 2008, and he was a prot protagonist of Michael Blyden's uh, film. And it was a play on the concept of supersize me and what would happen if he got high every day. Um, basically, he, he compares the result of not smoking any marijuana for the first 30 days versus the effects of smoking as much marijuana as possible for the same amount of time. Uh, the film was produced by Red Envelope Entertainment, and the result of the experiments that, uh, that were that it had little or no effect on Doug's health. Um, Ron, Imagine that. Yeah, exactly. healthier. Probably. On March 17, 2009, uh, he was a host for the Fox co uh, News comedy Red Eye with uh, Greg Glutfield, and he joked, among other things, that the United States should invade Canada. Benson, who appeared on the show, also made jokes about Canada's military. With these comments were made uh, on Canada's deadliest month in Afghanistan since operations began there in 2002. The Canadian government demanded an apology from Fox News as well as all of the pan panelists for being despicable and, <laughs> and making hurtful and ignorant comments. Um, <laughs> Doug was scheduled to appear in Canada's Edmonton comic strip on April 3rd through April 5th, but the shows were canceled after the owner received threats of bodily injury to the American comic. So, uh, Doug Benson, we salute you today. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my. Uh, we do have a caller on the line. We have uh, Keith. Hey, Keith, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. You have a, you have a court appearance coming up, don't you? Yeah, I'm calling in because I won't, you know, next time I call in or next week, hopefully I'm calling with some sort of a victory story. Because it'll be one week from today, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm saying 9.30 because we want to be early. But 9.30 in the morning on Tuesday at uh, Family Courts, Department T. It's going to be fun in front of the new judge with a new, hopefully a new uh, outcome and a new outlook. So we'll see. All right. So court support is needed on Purcell versus Patton on March 10th at 9.30 a.m. in the morning at the Clark County Family Court. 601 uh, North Pecos, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89101, and the department is Department T. So please don't yep. be late. It's on the northwest nope. corner of Bonanza and Pecos, for those of you who don't know. Thank you you don't have the pleasure. <laughs> Thank you guys for your support and everything you guys have been doing. Thanks for letting me come on a show and all that stuff. Um, and I want to thank everybody in advance who is coming out, because last time we had a good turnout, and I think the good turnout 
put us into the court early and they didn't dilly dally. They were like, we got to get this move forward so that we can get this courtroom emptied. So no doubt we'll be there. You better Let's believe it. So thank you, my you, friend. If you'd like, yeah, thank you, Keith. If you'd like to find more information on this, we have it on our meetup.com forward slash weekend 702. Sign up for free and you can see about any court support that's needed in the community. And if you need court support, you can suggest it on our meetup. Um, it's your meetup too. Uh, so please get on there and suggest it and we will make sure that we put it up on our calendar for you. All right. So, so we have more news. Yeah, I have a little no local news out of North Las Vegas. Uh, this is from uh, February 27th. Man denies selling marijuana after pot and guns were found in his home. Did you hear about that one? Well, was this the guy that had pot and guns and meth? Or was this a different no, guy? No, I think this is a no, different no, guy. No, this is the guy in North oh. Las Vegas. He was arrested after detectives found five marijuana plants, 24 pounds of marijuana, 45 grams of methamphetamine, 23 <laughs> guns, about fifteen thousand dollars and three thousand five hundred eighty grams of marijuana edibles and THC ex THC extract. In well, with meth, you know, there's paranoia, scumbag. so you need that many guns. Yeah, scumbag for sure. Yeah, so oh, you know, it pisses me off. I'm reading the threads online, and everyone's like, "Oh, you see the marijuana distributors." It's like, you know, I don't like that. I think it's the the title should be methamphetamine distributor caught with marijuana. But unfortunately, yeah. the guy was running a marijuana delivery service online, so that's the title we. Get. But once again, you know, we just have to work to educate the community and make sure that we can separate ourselves from these individual cases that uh, work to different... give us such big black eyes. Yeah, and this, yeah, black eyes after you've been up for three days on the meth. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, well, well put. And, yeah, and Garcia, the guy who was arrested, he, he is a val valid medical marijuana card holder. Of course he is. He is allowed to possess 12 plants and no more than two and a half ounces of usable marijuana. So he was under his plant count, but definitely over on the marijuana. And the meth. And the meth. And, and, and the throw, guns. Throw in some guns and have a little more fun, huh? I just want to know, the details haven't been revealed. They keep saying... It was a marijuana delivery service. Well, did they get tipped off by the marijuana delivery service? Or did they just happen to discover the meth? Or was it a pre-existing uh, investigation of uh, like another crime that he was committing that led them to the fact that, oh, well, this guy just happens to also be doing a delivery service. So let's make that the story. Like, you know, I don't really know. Well, so, maybe maybe the neighbors called after him peeking out the blinds 20 times in a minute. You never know, man. Maybe. Oh my God! Well, anyway. And I think it was some kind of like Green Bear or some weird delivery service. Grizzly, Grizzly, Grizzly Bear, Buds, Grizzly, Grizzly Buds, Buds or something. Jackass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, anyway, and yeah. So any of you guys out there doing this stuff, follow the law. I mean, these kind of these kinds of arrests and these kind of uh, things in the news make us all look bad. I mean, and once again, this guy's an opportunist. He isn't in a patient. Well, the guy, I think. How do I put this? Scumbag. Well, no, he's a scumbag for sure. But what I'm thinking is uh, the law enforcement hasn't been targeting these people because the juries in Nevada won't convict. So therefore, the DAs won't prosecute. Exactly. So I would have no problem convicting someone of this. This is an easy case. Yeah. So, of course, they are going to make that case. They're not going to ignore it just because he happens to be delivering marijuana if he's doing all these other things just to seek protection under the law with his medical marijuana card. So we can't dismiss that that guy might have been trying to do that also just to try to seek protection under the law for that purpose. And you know that protection might be valid, but when you throw when you throw methamphetamine yeah. and guns into the mix, exactly. you know th I I know plenty of patients and they don't they don't use methamphetamine for their pain. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. anyway, yeah. Let's move on. Um, I got a story here out of Northern Nevada, Carson City. There's sure. a bill introduced to regulate e-cigarettes like tobacco. This has actually gotten a lot of national attention. Uh, the use of electronic cigarettes and liquid nicotine would be regulated the same as tobacco under a bill introduced by the Nevada Senate on Monday. Senate Bill 201 under by the Senate's Finance Committee seeks to introduce uh, e-cigarettes and vaping under Nevada's Clean Indoor Air Act, which passed by voters in 2006. Hmm. The law prohibits smoking in most public places, including schools, daycare facilities, restaurants, and indoor places of employment. There is an exception for gambling areas, of course. Uh, let's see. Do popularity so of the e-cigarettes seeing... and liquid nicotine has been jumping. Uh, supporters claim they are safer than cigarettes. But, you know, what I really think this is about is lost revenue from the tobacco taxes. It doesn't really have a lot to do with public health. They're just seeing those lost revenues from the, you know, the Millennium Scholarship that was doing things of that nature. Yeah. So they want to try to replace that. And it makes sense. So 
Well, and the other thing is, is that isn't vaping, uh, like, isn't it safer for the people around you because it's a vapor? It's not really a smoke. So their secondhand smoke well, isn't affected? I, I, I would people imagine why affected? people, I would imagine the people who are pushing this would tell you otherwise that, oh, you know, vaping is, we haven't done enough research yeah. and, you know, that's not conclusive and this, that, and the other. But, you know, there's a lot of inconclusive things that are up, uh, that are in our market today that are you know our products that we can consume like our gmo food that we don't really know much about and things like that but uh i would definitely if it was me guessing i mean i've seen people the syntax definitely yeah thank you beach it is kind of a syntax uh we're kind of famous for that here but uh how do i put this i just feel like if you made me choose, the choice would be obvious. It would have to be the vaping. It's it's obviously safer. I mean, I've seen people who were smoking who've made the transition, and they're happier, healthier people, all of them. Okay. And, and, and I, so the, the vaping indoors, they haven't really see, shown or seen that secondhand smoke hurts anybody from, or secondhand vape hurts anybody. Well, just put smoke eaters in. You know, I, I used to go to bars where I used to smoke. They had the smoke eaters and, and drew it out. And I, I still you know. go to places that I go home and, and because of the cigarettes, the first thing I have to do is wash my clothes and take a shower. Yeah. So, yeah, no doubt. All right, you guys, some news out of Carson besides this IP1. Car, uh, Carson City Planning Commission approves a medical marijuana shop. Uh, there is a medical marijuana dispensary proposed for Clearview Drive in Carson City, and it's uh, secured approval from the Planning Commission. Um, it, it's a special use permit for Nevada Organics LLC, and it's going to go into a unit 119 of a shopping center at 135 Clearview Avenue. So that's where you can get your buds, guys. Um, <laughs> And the decision came uh, despite an objection from Jeff Furman of Carson City, who has a landscaping supply firm named Nevada Organics also. He said it confused people that the name was similar, similarly named, and it might cause a nuisance for him and other problems. I, I, don't that, I could see that, sure, but whatever. Maybe he might actually get some more traffic from people looking for the dispensary, so he might <laughs> actually benefit it and not even realize it yet. Yeah, exactly. Um so the Bill Meyer is the CEO and president of Nevada Organics LLC, and he said if problems arise, he can communicate about what might be done. But it, but his firm has approval from the state under the current name. And now, of course, they're still waiting for the labs to open so they can get their product out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the labs, the labs are actually holding a meeting tomorrow, aren't they? The, the I believe so. Laboratory testing committee. Where are we at? Yeah, Wednesday, March fourth, at three thirty p.m. at thirty-eight eleven West Charleston Suite one twelve in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you want to go to the Independent Laboratory Advisory Committee meeting to voice your opinion on how they should speed this process up and get the labs open sure. constructively and eloquently. Please yeah, show and up on time yes. and dress nice. Dress nicely. Please show up on time. Don't speak out of order. They will call for people to publicly speak at this, and that is your time to come up and voice your opinion. Please don't call out during the meeting while uh, people are up there testifying. Um, it just makes everybody look bad. <laughs> so, okay. all right, guys. Well, I have a story out of Wendover. It says Wendover. Wendover, Nevada. It's right on the Wendover. Utah border, border. What they're really famous for is they draw a lot of tourists uh, from Salt Lake City. They're the closest Nevada city, to, or excuse me, the, the closest Nevada city to Salt Lake City, which is about you know, 100, 120 miles. And people like to come over there and drink and get their cigarettes and things of that nature. Sure. But, where anyway. they can get real alcohol. and Yeah, exactly. <laughs> instead of the half-strength stuff that Utah's famous for. Well, you know, we do that here in Nevada, and everyone does. This is a... a cross-border thing. I mean, you go to the California-Nevada border and there's a lottery station right on the other side of the border and then we have That's casinos right. right on the other side of their border. That's so right. So are we kind of spitting across the border? Yeah, sure we are, but it is what it is. But anyway, uh, the county of Elko had an ordinance where they were going to prohibit all recreational or medical marijuana establishments from being... Um, licensed by the county unless the feds took action they're like we will allow this if the feds back off well now these memorandums are coming out and that that law passed that congressional law that defunded the uh, dea from spending money on agents to enforce these uh, federal marijuana laws so it has kind of de facto gone that way so now we're curious to see how the county of elko will interpret that whether they will take that as a cue that it's okay for them now that there are no uh no agents to enforce said law 
the law becomes fairly moot, so they can go ahead and open these now and expose themselves to that potential tourist market across the border. So you know, we'll see if that ends up happening or not. But you know, Mesquite is actually more likely to siphon off that business, according to what the article here says, because their county commission or their city council is so much more flexible than the northern Nevadans are. Sure, and Mesquite got approved for a cultivation, a huge cultivation, like one million like square foot, something like that. Oh, of cultivation. Eighty thousand square feet is my understanding, um, in two buildings that of which forty thousand will be the first phase right on yeah. so are there any dispensaries at mesquite there's yes. gonna like one, one. approved one. yeah one. there was one person i believe in mesquite that got the the way it was supposed to be the vertical integration i think they got oh, all right three on. licenses up yep. there <laughs> yep all located in the same lo- same spot mm-hmm. oh that's awesome yeah. so mesquite will be uh now the new place that utah people from utah like to yeah. go to get their their cannabis for sure <laughs> and your it, last stop on on your way to the valley of fire <laughs> no doubt no doubt Interesting all right times. so there are still um there's still questions about um the medical marijuana industry they're saying it's still shrouded in secrecy because a lot of people opted not to put their name up uh oh we're it, talking here locally like for the county applications or whatever oh we're talking yeah, for through the whole state the yeah, whole yeah. state uh that basically you know we you got to sign off on a release that would release your name well, still, like, what, 37% of people are not, or 38% no. of people? No, as of, as of last week, the state was showing 199 business, businesses identified only as consent to release not provided. So almost 200 <laughs> people still don't want people to know they're getting a license. That's well, 38%. Yeah. So, and including more than 40% of would-be dispensary operators are keeping their information, uh, you know, on the hush-hush. They don't want people to know who they are until they open. Uh, I've also heard some rumors that a lot of these businesses are failing to open before they even start. A lot of cultivation people, you remember, like, Oprah, it was like, here's your cultivation license. You win, you win, you win. Yeah, the approve-a-thon. The approve-a-thon that we called it. Well, I heard a lot, they don't got the money, right? They don't got the money uh-huh. but the other thing is is that we've got lobbyists up in carson city now trying to make it so that you can get rid of deadweight partners and not only that but oh. are they going to write that into where you can actually buy and sell ownership because you know yeah. if they could actually raise equity through selling capital that yep. would make it a lot easier for people who missed the initial application process to buy in well and and the other thing about that is if they uh if they approve this you can get rid of the dead weight these people came in they promised money to these groups and said oh i'll give you know this much money i'll put forth this much money and they got a big equity position and now they're not delivering on those on those promises of their money but guess what they still have the percentages they can't legally kick them out yeah they can't Mm. legally kick them out of these groups man and so they're lobbying right now to kind of change that so that people can change partners and and get new partners um and and so i hope that really does go through because these deadweight people that that basically said oh you know give me 10 percent of your company and i'll give you a half a million dollars and then aren't delivering on those on those promises can just be kicked out i heard one estimate like up to 30 to 40 percent of these cultivation facilities don't have the funds to to really get open and pay back their pre-existing debts from their exactly. lobbying and their lawyer fees and their application fees and all that kind of stuff. And like that, they're in the hole. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of these people that on this approvathon that got approved that are not opening. They're just not opening because they don't have the money. People aren't delivering on the money they said they would, or just basically they can't find funding. Oh man. And and there are people that cannot find funding. And, and I would think that that would have been a no-brainer. If you've got the license, the well, money will come. That was, that was supposed to be what the whole pre-licensing thing was all about. Oh, you had to have a quarter million, liquid, yeah, background checked, etc. And you know what I found when I started talking to these teams? I must have met with dozens and dozens of teams over the months that I was uh, trying to break in. And... Uh, well, the one thing I found is that these companies were spending millions of dollars on lawyers for application fees, for real estate people, but what they weren't spending their money on is private inve- investigators to look at the people they were doing business with. Oh, yeah. Nobody really wanted to take a hard look at the people sitting next to them. They kind of just wanted to trust them, and I think it bit a lot of them right in the butt. Well, we did we did a lot of our own investigation of, of the people that came in with us, and so we avoided all of those problems because... Because, you know, that's the first thing I ask is I said, did you investigate them? And they're like, what? 
And I'm like, you know, before I came and in with you, I investigated. And don't have the time, don't have the money, et cetera, so on and so forth. No, People well, give excuses when it's convenient, but the money's there when they think it's there, to, you know, when they think it's important. Exactly. And what I told them is I investigated you before I came into this room. And they, they kind of looked almost shocked. I'm like, like, you don't trust me? And I'm like, uh, when money comes around, you know what? I trust nobody. 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 All right, I think we're going to go on a break now, and we'll come back, and uh, we'll talk about some more regional and fun news after the break. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at wecan702.org. Hi, welcome back, everybody, and this is the last part of our um, Nevada Cannabis News show, and we're going to talk about some uh, regional subjects, and I don't know, Beach says some fun stories, but I still want to, I'm still spitting tax about IP1, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on our minds, definitely. It just happened, and it's, I don't think it's fully uh, set in yet that... Uh... The, what happened at that luncheon? Well, yeah, you know, if I mean, it looked like there was going to be a lynching. I, it's seriously, I seriously think that, I seriously think that if they think that they can pull this crap uh, off, then they've got another thing coming in. I personally know four lobbyists that are up there and um, a bunch, a bunch of industry people that are getting their pocketbooks in line to to go and to go and yeah. battle this well, we'll do our very best of course and if you guys want to help us you know contact us on our facebook weekend702.org yeah you know where to find us you know where to find us well uh maybe like larry sanders i should use cannabis to medically deal with my stress <laughs> <laughs> uh especially my stress after today uh larry sanders is starting in the nba um, he's 26 years old and he should technically be in his tr prime and this dream quickly turned to a nightmare. He recently agreed to a buyout with the Milwaukee Bucks and now has effectively put his once promising career on hold to focus on his personal issues. As Sanders tells the Players Tribune uh, in an honest and heartfelt interview, he recently admitted to him himself to a hospital to uh, address his anxiety and mood disorders. He concludes that he's in a happy place and he doesn't seem um, like he's in a hurry to return to the NBA. But about three mm. minutes into the clip, Sanders addressed his multiple suspensions for marijuana and the wavelengths um, his cannabis use has made. You know, he's dealing with 
stress with cannabis and he say, says that the cannabis use came later in life to cope with his anxiety disorder for most smokers cannabis can bring in on anxiety attacks but for him marijuana appears to be the only way he can safely address this issue so he's taking time off to deal with his anxiety he's using cannabis but the nba is going to drug test him when he gets back so you know well, that's the double standard that so many athletes face professionally and amateur. You know, it is what it is. And we really have to work to educate these organizations as well as our legislators and regulators. It's just another battle we have to fight. I mean, it really is the huge double standard I always point to is right here in Nevada is the most obvious one. There was a boxer named Julio Cesar Chavez who was fined. Oh, yeah. He was fined $900,000 after testing positive for marijuana after a title fight. And, uh, there was a gentleman named John Jones, who is the UFC light heavyweight champion, talented guy, maybe the best pound for pound fighter in the world right now, had a fight, won the fight, drug tested, positive cocaine. for cocaine. Well, the same Nevada State Athletic Commission that regulates boxing, that also regulates the UFC, decided to implement no fine, no suspension, and no punishment whatsoever to Mr. Jones. A lot of people called, oh, you know, it was... Uh, Dana White and he was the one who was pulling the strings and this and that but really it was just their pre-existing policy that never addressed that specific drug and <clears throat> excuse me and uh, it's just kind of one of those things like it's ridiculous but it's true it's so crazy that it's true and we really like you said this guy's self-medicating he's being punished for self-medicating in the way that he sees fit just because the league has a pre-existing old racist policy from back in the day and well and that and that's just what it amounts to i mean seriously cocaine is okay and that's uh, and that can even help your ability to f to fight or to play or whatever else but marijuana they show or they say doesn't help your ability to perform in any sporting event the drug testing is supposed to be about protecting the athletes if and they're cocaine doing something is that's very harmful. Yeah, if they're doing something that's dangerous, we got to protect these guys. The steroids, they're, you know, the steroids, the hard drugs, things like that. There's a reason why they do this drug testing. Otherwise, it will encourage the youth to do it, things like that. There are all kinds of good you know reasons how to many drug people test. Have, but, you know how many people have had heart attacks on cocaine? Now you get out there and you're fighting and you're fighting and you're, and you're on cocaine? That's crazy. That's crazy that they, they say that they're they're trying to protect people, and, and yet cocaine is not is not one of those things that if, they're going to exactly. protect. Exactly. If they really from. wanted to protect the fighters, they would take this stand and do something. What that something is, I'm not on the Nevada State Athletic Commission, but that's just where it is. <laughs> anyway, so I got a, I got a little news out of New York. Uh, did you hear about uh, the Marish Marishano Cherry Factory that? Uh, just no, I did not hear about the Maraschino Cherry Factory. <laughs> well, there's a factory in Brooklyn that uh, produces the sweet and slippery Maraschino cherries you find in your cocktails. Mm. Uh, turns out it was a front for a high-level marijuana grow. The cherry factory was doubling as a grow house, was raided by investors last Wednesday in response to the owner's suicide. It was raided by investors? Like the investors came in to protect their their investment or something? Yeah. How bizarre. Uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, they came in and they... they carried out boxes of marijuana which was stored the pop bust unraveled a deeper story a murder mystery and a double life arthur mandela a third generation owner of the family business was involved in a large-scale grow and not a single family member or friend had any idea my a ass <laughs> <laughs> according to some there were a few oddities about mandela but none of them suggested suicide the uh, Mandela's <laughs> friend said that he didn't believe any of the dead man's relatives were aware of the illegal pot growing operation surrounding, sprouting beneath the cherry factory. <laughs> but he said Mandela was known to spend up to 20 hours a day working at the factory, including <laughs> shifts on his Christmas day and holidays, a devotion perhaps explained by his second business. After Mandela in shot Brooklyn. him, yeah. After he shot himself in the head, authorities discovered a huge marijuana growing operation in the basement of the Red Hook factory. A scenario straight out of Breaking Bad, they said. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking when you said under the factory. I was like, oh, this sounds like Breaking Bad, man. What a trip. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, I guess if he's spending that much time working, then maybe he was working, you know, the grow. I mean, it doesn't of take course, that much. Which you once you have the grow in place, it doesn't take that mu many people to maintain it. Yeah. So it's. Prior to his committing suicide, Mandela was described as cooperative with the police. The police in his what started as an inquiry regarding syrup as an environmental issue at his cherry factory. But the syrup <laughs> led cops to 80 pounds of weed stuffed into bags and ultimately 
Mandela's downfall. And I guess he just got so upset about that that he didn't want to go on anymore. Maybe you should have Christ. smoked more. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got a little bit of regional news out of uh, my second home of Alaska. All right. There's a story out of Wasilla, which is famously Sarah Palin's uh, hometown where she was the mayor before she became the governor. Uh-huh. And uh, on Monday, on the eve of marijuana legalization in Alaska, the city council of Wasilla banned making pot brownies at home. Fewer than three hours. What? Yeah. Fewer than three hours before recreational marijuana use became legal across the state. The city, known for a freewheeling attitude about everything from big box stores to ATVs, passed what may be, for now, the strictest local laws governing recreational pot use in Alaska. With a 4-2 to vote, the city essentially limited marijuana use within city limits to smoking or consuming edibles made outside the city on private property. Even smoking at home is illegal if it bothers the neighbors. What? The new regulations include a ban on making edibles, concentrates, or extracts at home. And at least within Wasilla city limits, it's now illegal to transport more than two ounces of marijuana inside one vehicle now convoy a, well <laughs> there's only one highway that connects anchorage to fairbanks and it goes right through wasilla oh so my if gosh. you have people who have cultivation facilities up north who want to bring their product down south this is going to be a problem a huge problem i mean you can take the side roads but they're not like the side not, roads go over a glacier <laughs> well, yeah it's not it's not how i would want to transport my product if i was a business owner uh you have and, and, anyway uh, wasilla train? Resident, wasilla, no i don't know that's owned by the state once again that would be a thing uh. Uh, wasilla residents within city limits voted against ballot measure two the marijuana initiative by roughly four percent margin according to mayor bert cottle as a whole voters in the matsu borough also narrowly voted against the measure but those in palmer and houston supported it palmer is where they have all the big farms when you look on the alaska state fair you see like the thousand pound pumpkins they grow all that cool stuff in palmer they have the best climate in alaska and you would of course expect those pre-existing farmers to uh switch to on jump over on with that oh yeah kind of as a note you know sarah palin is totally pro cannabis she cast her vote for it and uh, when she was the governor she was very hands-off with it there are still in palmer you'll see sarah palin for governor signs all over out there even though she hasn't ran in years so it's just one of those things I got a little funny news out of Alaska. You know, legalization just passed. Um, on legalization day, there was a local pizzeria that offered a special Cheech and Chong pizza. Eagle River Pizzeria is offering a special pizza in honor of the first day that marijuana was legalized in Alaska. Uh, with a shout out to the Anchorage Assembly member and a mayoral candidate who introduced an ordinance that would have, been, would have seen Anchorage ban commercial marijuana establishments before regulations have been enacted. The, uh, the special pizza in observance of legalized marijuana Alaska is the Cheech and Chong pizza. It has smoked mozzarella, smoked gouda, oregano, and pizza sauce with your choice of chicken, shrimp, or hamburger. And you also may get the Amy Dombrowski version with all the <laughs> above without the oregano. The and, Dombrowski, that's great. Yeah, and she's one of the anti, anti-marijuana anti people on the uh, Alaska. Yeah, she, she's the without one. The yeah, she's without the, the oregano. Yeah, she's the one who, who's trying to kill it. But you know, you, Suddenly there's it all one became in every clear. family, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Chelsea Handler celebrates her 40th birthday with her medical marijuana card. Um, it's not a difficult task to find marijuana in <clears throat> in California. You can it's easily to uh, to find a dispensary near you, but before you can walk into a dispensary, you still need your medical marijuana card. Chelsea Handler just undertook to obtain her MMJ card at the ripe old age of 40 years old. Very cool. Uh, she says, "I'm a legal marijuana." Uh, just in time for my 40th Dork. birthday tomorrow. Now I need to get a lighter. Uh, the only question here is what took Chelsea so long? No I kidding. mean, she's always talking about it on her show, oh, Vodka boy. and Weed. We're getting the uh, one-minute warning, so I guess it's time to ramble off some announcements real quick before we deprive you of our company for the afternoon. We have our Independent Laboratory Advisory Committee meeting tomorrow, March 4th at 3.30 p.m. at 3811 West Charleston, Suite 112. And we have our first Friday booth, March 6th, from 5 p.m. to midnight. This Friday, and then we have the Growing Nevada class on March 7th, 2015. 4 to 7 p.m., and that's at the Weekend Corporate Office. We have Women Grow this Thursday, March 5th. 
Uh, we have our uh, Together We Can monthly meeting on the second Saturday, uh, March 12th, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And don't forget the about Coffee our four. Oh, sorry. And don't Coffee forget about our 420 Freedom Festival. 420 Freedom Festival coming on 419. That's Sunday. You come out at the Las Vegas Country Saloon. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we'll see you all next week. So please contact your legislators and get IP1 shot down. <laughs>